I'm Ben Sauerwein, and this is the talk I'll be giving at the APS March 2009 meeting called Folding Kinetics of Riboswitch Transcriptional Terminators. I did this work with my advisor Mike Whittem at Carnegie Mellon University. I'd like to start with a brief review of RNA as it is relevant to this project. Messenger RNA is transcribed nucleotide by nucleotide from your DNA, which is later translated into proteins at the ribosome. The riboswitch acts during the time of transcription and can be found in some bacteria, viruses, and fungi. As this RNA is transcribed, it's free to sample an ensemble of structures by virtue of its base pairing with itself. One structure the RNA could code for is a riboswitch, which consists of a sensor region called an aptamer, which binds a ligand in solution, or for instance, glycine. Binding the ligand stabilizes the aptamer, which will in turn affect whether or not a terminator hairpin that is transcribed later can reach its desired structure. The riboswitch is then a detector that modifies how much of a gene is expressed based on how much solute is present. The riboswitch actually works like this. If the folded structure has the form of a hairpin, when the transcription reaches a polyurosyl pause site downstream, the DNA-RNA complex is destabilized transcription stops, and the gene is not expressed. If the hairpin has not formed, transcription continues and the gene does get expressed. Being that a typical bacterial transcription rate is about 50 nucleotides per second, a hairpin could take one or two seconds to transcribe, and so the terminator hairpins are under a clear time constraint to form during transcription. We studied RNA folding at the level of secondary structure. This means that we're concerned with which bases are paired and which are not, as opposed to the particulars of the configuration of the chain in solution. Further, we focus on RNA chains free of complicated structures called pseudonauts. To do this, we use a Monte Carlo simulator called Kinfold, as well as an implementation of McCaskill's and Zucker's algorithms called RNAfold. Henceforth, when I speak of folding efficiency, I mean the proportion of the expected minimum free energy structure predicted by RNA fold that is found by kinfold when the polyuracil site is reached. To motivate the study, the first thing that we looked at was the folding of Bacillus subtilis terminators as predicted in RFAM versus the same terminator hairpin grown in the backwards direction and we found that the hairpins growing in the biological direction always performed as well as or better than the artificial reverse growth set. This control was valuable since the reversed sequence has the same metastable states and energies but obviously a different folding pathway under growth. This study has a serious problem however which is that the limited number of known subtilis riboswitches and the limited size of the experimental group offered by the reverse growth just doesn't give us very much certainty in these results. The trend, however, is enough to warrant more study. So in order to obtain a suitably large population, population for control, we randomly shuffled the terminator hairpin in such a way as to approximately preserve secondary structure, nucleotide content, and minimum free energy. As it later became apparent, the particular method of shuffling did not affect our conclusions. The biological hairpins do not at first glance have anything to set them apart from the hairpins with similar minimum free energy structures. For each riboswitch then, where we were able to locate the biological folding success rate amid the distribution of shuffled folding success rates and assign a probability of achieving a result at least this extreme from the random set if there were no natural selection for efficiency. This is uh, the statistical method known as finding a p-value or probability. In this summary plot, you can see the, su the success rate increasing along the x-axis and a histogram of sequences in each bin along the vertical. We see then that most of the randomly shuffled hairpins fold quite well and lie in the 90% success rate or higher bin, but also that there is a long tail of random hairpins that like to get stuck in metastable states. 
the real hairpins lack this feature. As it turns out, about 85% of the shuffled population finds its desired minimum free energy structure very efficiently. But 15% of them fail despite having a similar nucleotide content, equilibrium structure, and minimum free energy as the biological case. If we believe that 30 subtilis hairpins meant 30 independent trials, the probability of reaching this result would be quite low, as you can see. Unfortunately, we cannot be certain that our real terminators constitute independent trials as they have been copied around the genome extensively as the organisms mutated and evolved. What we can say with certainty is that while any individual hairpin's performance is unremarkable, the fact that on the whole, the biological hairpins avoid pathologically bad metastable states. As a possible explanation for this, we studied preferential placement of the nucleotides. Along the x-axis here, we have bins corresponding from early transcribed to late transcribed regions of the terminator hairpin, and the vertical axis shows excess nucleotide content. Since uracil likes binding with both adenine and guanine, and guanine likes binding with both uracil and cytosine, perhaps these promiscuous nucleotides should be preferentially placed late in the hairpin in order to avoid nucleation of unwanted structures. An enhancement of cytosine on the earlier transcribed side of the hairpin and complementary guanine on the later side gives some support to this idea. The uracil enhancement towards the early middle parts of the hairpin is actually a result of a functional polyuracil pause site that is present in the middle of many of the terminators. Upon a little bit of extra study on this trend, we found that the nucleotide placement was a necessary but not sufficient explanation for folding efficiency. In conclusion, equilibrium thermodynamics does not predict performance of terminator hairpins because performance is a non-equilibrium property because riboswitches act under kinetic control. Thank you.